Hello and welcome to the next episode of our On Device Research Academy. I'm pleased to be joined today by Dr Alastair Good, Cognitive Scientist at Gorilla in the Room. What do you believe makes AR so special? I think there are two things that make augmented reality special. Firstly, in terms of uh, research, um, we're always striving to try and predict the future. Now, one thing that we know about um, research is we can do it in three places. Um, we can do it in the past, where we get people to consciously, mentally reconstruct a past event and then report it back. And that has some merit, you know, but I, the work I did before shows that that's not always as accurate as we'd like to think it is. We can then, and where brands most want the research done, is in the future, where we get to say, OK, here's a new idea to someone. Now, imagine it exists, imagine there's a future place with it in, now tell us how you're going to react, react to it. That's something that the brain's really, really bad at doing and actually produces a lot of inaccuracy. So we often kind of say that it, it's about shortening the say-do gap because people say one thing and then they'll do another thing. And one of the reasons is because we're trying to get people to do something that the brain's not really very good at doing. So what augmented reality is very good at doing is giving people a realist experience of what a product or a pack or something is like and then being able to respond to it as if it does exist now without having to go through the whole thing of making it and making it real and sending it out to people. So that's one of the great strengths within research. Um, when it comes to media, augmented reality is important. As I say, it is much more involved in the way in which people in experience it. So people can place something somewhere, they can go away, they can come back, it's still there. They can move around it, they can react to it as if it is something that is real in the room with them at the time. And I think we do have to think of it as a new media channel. Um, and that media channel, we're working towards establishing exactly how that integrates into the current digital marketing mix. But certainly it does have a a different kind of role than I think usual display or other kinds of um, social media. It's better at making people convert towards buying something. It's also very good at helping people understand what the final outcome is going to be. So those are probably the two big areas. I think one, the area of augmented reality in online retail is going to be very big and it's probably the next big step that retail is going to need to take. What are some of the key challenges that you see in existence across the AR and VR market? Some of the main challenges in the VR AR space are certainly the, the technology is a barrier because whether people are actually going to wear headsets or not is debatable. And also I think there's been this um, misinformation about what the metaverse or what this metaverse thing actually is. And I think you know, Zuckerberg has given his interpretation of what it is and that may not necessarily be, I mean it's, it's a much broader thing than his definition. So. And um, with augmented reality, again, I think it's important to be able to understand how and why it is impact, as impactful as it is. So one of the things, it's very black box at the moment. So people are kind of had, make, creating these experiences in the world of XR, extended reality, which covers both of them. Um, they're kind of starting at one point, they're saying, OK, and then they give people an experience and they measure at the end, they go, great, it's changed. But they're not digging into the black box, not defining why that's happening. So I think there's a there's a paucity of information about why these experiences change attitudes in the way that in the way they do and they do do it very effectively so there's a lot of work to be done on understanding that we're starting that journey but i still think there's a fair way to go to really define how these new media channels can be used and where they fit into the media mix and as they where they fit into the so the sort of the purchase funnel. You know, are they at the start as kind of brand building experiences, which, which is one place, or are they going to be you know, much more towards the end of the funnel with kind of like you know, purchase and getting people over the line to actually buy something? And finally, what are your expectations for the AR and VR market as we head into 2024? So my expectations of the AR and VR space, I mean, it's gone a bit quiet this year compared to last year because everybody's got terribly excited about artificial intelligence, which I, having worked with that for 30 years, I think it's been around and there's a lot to be said for it. But just because uh, a computer looks and well, sounds like it's making human decisions doesn't necessarily mean there's a human thinking behind it. Human intelligence, HI, is still far cleverer than AI and always will be for the foreseeable future. So 
But going back to augmented and virtual reality in terms of what we see that happening, we've seen an expansion with virtual reality certainly in teaching and education because it's far better to experience something than to be told it. I think with augmented reality we'll increasingly see more companies using it in their um, retail space and certainly we know that there are a lot of the uh, augmented reality companies or companies that are working with augmented reality that are kind of trying to build these retail platforms to be able to give people that experience of you know seeing a product to try before you buy basically. Um, we know there are lots of benefits to that. So that's where we'd expect to see the biggest um, increase over the next few months or next year uh, certainly. But in terms of virtual reality again that's very difficult to predict because there are lots of people bringing out lots of new technologies that tend to be the next big technology. I mean, certainly Apple Glass came out and it's great, it's an amazing piece of tech, but it's technology that hasn't necessarily found a place, or found a problem to solve, and that's always an issue. So if you have, I mean, it is a wonderful headset, it looks beautiful, it looks brilliant, but are you really going to replace your laptop with a, you know, a, a headset? I mean, the whole concept behind spatial computing that Apple have talked about is hu it's hugely important and will be hugely important in the future. But I still think we need to sort of do a lot of different test cases with where it can be used and how it can be used before it's going to be globally adopted. But the technology is moving a lot faster than people are. Thank you, Alastair. Do you need to drive better accountability and demonstrate effective insights when it comes to AR and VR advertising? then please reach out to us at ondeviceresearch.com.